So do you want to mine Bitcoin at home? Well, this is the best Bitcoin home miner out there right now, and it's called the Canaan Avalon Q. But is it a magic passive income money printing machine? Well, let's talk about that. First though, what is this thing? Well, it's a Bitcoin mining rig designed specifically for home use. It's made by Canaan, a miner manufacturer that has been in the game for a long time. In fact, they've been around since 2013, cranking out hardware for Bitcoin mining. And this Q model is their latest stab at making something that doesn't scream at data center when you plug it in. And also it literally doesn't scream because most Bitcoin mining machines do indeed sound like jet engines. So why is this the best home Bitcoin miner out there right now? Well, from what I've seen myself and others, it balances the power and practicality better than most of the other alternatives. It is not the absolute most powerful thing out there. That would be stuff like Bitmain's S21 series or the new S23 series coming out later, but those are crazy for home setups for most people because of how loud and how power hungry they are. The Avalon Q on the other hand hits around 90 terahash in its max mode, which is plenty for a solo home miner or a casual pool miner if you have the right electricity cost. And it's built to run without needing a warehouse or earplugs. People on Reddit and YouTube are saying it's great for apartments or offices because it looks and sounds more like a gaming PC than a jet engine ASIC miner. Also, if you have solar on your house already, then this thing might be a no brainer, but I'll go more into that in just a little bit. Now, I first tweeted about this machine back back in May when I saw it at the Mining Disrupt Conference, and I've been excited to get my hands on one ever since. So thank you to Kanan for sending this one over for me to test out. Now let's talk about the size of the unit. For what you get, it is pretty compact. It has a height of 18 inches tall, it's five inches wide and 17 inches deep, and it weighs about 24 pounds. Or if you live basically anywhere else other than the US, that's 45 centimeters tall, 13 centimeters wide, 44 centimeters deep, and weighing in at around 11 kilograms. It's roughly the footprint of a mid-tower desktop computer. So it could fit on a shelf or under a desk without dominating the room. It doesn't have massive fans or exposed wires. It's very sleek, it's got a black case, it blends in. Now on the electric side, it pulls 1,674 watts at full power, but that is adjustable with different modes. It works on standard 110 all the way up to 240 volt household power. So usually you don't need a fancy wiring upgrades. And that means here in the US, you can plug it into a standard outlet, which you cannot do with all the big, loud, professional ASIC miners. At the lowest on eco mode, it uses about 830 watts and gives you 54 terahash of hash rate. Standard mode is 1,360 watts at 80 terahash. And super mode is 1,674 watts, giving you the full 90 terahash for maximum earning potential. And overall power efficiency is pretty good at 18.6 joules per terahash, which means it's not wasting a ton of energy compared to other or older models. When it comes to setup, the setup is relatively plug and play. You connect to power, you hook up ethernet, and then you use the Avalon family app on your phone to configure pools and wallets. And the app also lets you switch between those different modes, checks the stats, and you can monitor everything about the miner from your phone. And really you don't need any deep tech knowledge to to set this thing up. It's pretty beginner friendly with remote control options if you do get stuck. That said, some users have reported app crashes and connectivity issues, which seems to be the main technical complaint about this unit. But once it's running, almost everybody says it just works. Kanan even offers setup help for a fee, which could be worth it if you're new to this and you don't wanna deal with it yourself. But I would recommend trying it yourself because number one, it's not that hard. And number two, it's a good learning experience which I think is one of the biggest reasons you would buy something like this to learn about mining. And how loud is this unit? And I would say this is maybe the most important spec when it comes to home mining, because most people want a home miner that they don't notice loudly screaming in the corner of their home. Well, in eco mode, it's just under 40 decibels, which is quieter than a fridge hum. Standard mode bumps it to around 50 dB, which is basically like a background conversation. And super mode hits 60 to 65 decibels, which is more like a dishwasher running. And I will say in super mode, you really don't wanna be in the same room with it. However, on eco mode, or maybe even standard mode, you will likely not even notice it running in your room and other real users do confirm this. One Reddit user says that it's surprisingly quiet and hasn't affected my electricity bill as much as I feared. Another mentioned running it in their garage and barely noticing it. And overall, I can confirm myself that it is way quieter than normal Bitcoin miners, which again, scream at upwards of 75 to 85 decibels or more. But the million dollar question is how much does this thing earn? And the hash rate options are key here because they let you tweak the performance based on your setup or your requirements. And as I said before, the Avalon Q has three 
main modes. Eco mode around 54 terahash at 830 watts. This is your low power quiet option, which is great for keeping your electricity bills down or running it in the bedroom. Standard mode hits 80 terahash at 1360 watts, which is pretty balanced for everyday use. It's all efficiency without maxing it out. And then super mode, which is up to 90 terahash at 1674 watts. And this is the full throttle setting for maximum output, but it does draw a lot more power and it does make quite a bit more noise. But what is cool is you can actually adjust these based on your electricity costs, time of day, or even solar generation if you're running renewable energy. It is fully customizable. Now, as for the earnings, it depends on Bitcoin's price, the network difficulty, and your power costs. But at current Bitcoin levels and around a 10 cents per kilowatt hour electricity rate, you're looking at $35 a month or $421 a year in profits in super mode. In standard mode, it's just over $26 a month or $315 a year in profits. And lastly, eco mode is $24 a month or $288 a year in profit. But of course, you might be watching this at a time when the price of Bitcoin is different. So you can use a site like whattomine.com or miningnow.com to check the current profits. So why do I think this thing is a great Bitcoin home miner? Well, for starters, it's purpose-built for home use, unlike pretty much all the other miners out there. It's quiet, relatively compact, and efficient in ways that industrial rigs are not. You can absolutely run this in your living room without it sounding like a vacuum or spiking your power bill into orbit. And the adjustable power modes mean you can run it in eco mode during the expensive peak hours and then ramp up to super mode when electricity is cheaper. And if you're on time of use billing or have solar, well then this flexibility is massive. The app integration is smooth. You can monitor temps, hash rate, and earnings from your phone. And it does support solo mining if you're feeling lucky for a block reward. At 18.6 joules per terahash, it is pretty efficient, meaning more Bitcoin per watt than some older home options. People speaking from their experience on Reddit have reported stable performance, with some running multiple machines in a single house with zero issues. And it is from Kanan, who does have a reputation for reliable hardware. And the build quality is really solid. People have reported running it continuously for long periods without issues. Some even report zero downtime on Avalon miners after a full year plus. And compared to other home miners like the Avalon Mini 3 or the Nano 3S, the Q packs way more punch, making it better for serious stacking. And versus the big noisy machines like the Ant miners, it's a no brainer when it comes to home comfort. But I think where this gets more interesting is when we talk about the future of Bitcoin Bitcoin's price. Like what if Bitcoin were to hit $150,000? Well, then the Avalon Q would earn $57 a month or about $680 a year. If Bitcoin did even better than that and reached 300,000, then it would earn $114 a month or $1,363 a year. Of course, this is assuming that network difficulty will remain the same, which it will not. So then who is this meant for? The Avalon Q is aimed at the home enthusiast who wants a real mining machine without going fully pro. And if you're a Bitcoin hodler who is looking to accumulate slowly or someone with cheap power wanting passive income, well then this fits. But I think this would be a really, really great fit for somebody with solar panels since it doesn't use a ton of electricity to begin with. And this would basically be a set it and forget it miner for you. And in general, I think it's a great fit for anybody who wants to learn more about mining without a massive upfront investment or a massive ongoing electricity bill. But it's also great for solo mining chasing lottery blocks or pool joiners who want the steady payouts. And just for reference, your chance of solo mining the next Bitcoin block with this thing is about one in 10 million, which is about the same odds of you becoming the next president of the United States or getting picked as an astronaut. So if you're not busy running for office or running into space, well, then you could give it a shot. Then again, if you do hit a block, which is not totally unheard of, that would be potentially worth over $400,000 at today's prices. If you're someone who lives in cold climates, well, then you might love the heating aspect of this. You mine and warm your space at the same time and save on your electricity bills. Or running it at your office works too, since it's quiet, it looks normal like a computer. But if you are all about the max profit, well then getting the bigger machines and having those hosted somewhere is probably better. This is overall for decentralized hobby level mining with some upside. Now, why would you not want one of these machines? Well, first the price. $1,888 as I currently record this upfront is not cheap and a return on your investment will take a while, especially if Bitcoin dips or difficulty spikes. And I do think that this is by far the biggest downside with this machine. You can go the DIY route for a home Bitcoin miner for much less money. I really wish this thing was cheaper, but that said, it does look really good and it feels great. It seems like much, much higher quality than other machines out there, even some of the pro level ones. It's very sturdy, looks like it's gonna last a long time. So I do understand where the premium comes from. Another downside is that electricity costs do eat a bunch of your profit 
profits, if your rates are over 13 cents per kilowatt hour right now, then you might actually be losing money in super mode. Of course, if you have solar, then this will likely be profitable for you even if Bitcoin drops in price a lot. There's also the noise and heat to consider. Even though it is quieter than traditional machines, super mode is not silent. It's quiet for an ASIC, but not something you wanna be sitting next to. It sounds like a gaming computer that is under full load. This is also not a great fit for anybody who is expecting a very quick ROI without understanding any of the mining economics. And if you plan on running multiple machines, you need to be careful which circuits you run them on so you don't overload anything. In fact, you might even need a dedicated 20 amp circuit if you're running a super mode, because if you're on a standard 15 amp circuit, you are limited to eco or standard modes. The super mode just pushes it too much. Another issue or feature, depending on how you look at it, is that this pumps out heat like a space heater, which is great in winter, but depending on where you live, sweaty in summer. If you're in a hot climate and you don't have good ventilation, this could be a deal breaker. So if you're noise sensitive, power poor, or short term focused, skip this and go for something smaller like the Nano 3S. Or if you want industrial power, get one of the big boy ASICs. But for balanced home mining, the Q is definitely worth considering. Because the bottom line is that the Avalon Q is a miner that does a good job of bringing professional mining to home environments. But again, it is not a no catch money printing machine and it won't work for everyone. Success depends heavily on your specific situation, your electricity costs, your climate, technical comfort level, and realistic profit expectations. But if you are interested, I will drop a link down below to the machine. But I think the big question here is, is it even worth mining Bitcoin right now? Well, watch this video where I dig into that exact question. I go over my own personal results from the past three years and why you may or may not also want to venture into Bitcoin mining. Goodbye.